and greetings. Uh, welcome to another episode of Artists of the Night. Today we are going to be talking with Brian Tryon, photographer uh, extraordinaire, and uh, take a good look at a lot of his work and kind of get his thoughts on photography, uh, narrative, and the art form in general. So, Brian, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Dustin. This is very cool, even in this time of uh, Zoom and video chats, um, the COVID COVID times. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm I'm really happy to. I'm really excited to be talking to you today. Um, your your photography is phenomenal, and uh, I think uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to kind of exploring your thoughts on what you do. Thank you. Uh, so, Brian, a little bit about yourself. Um, how long have you been a photographer? What what is your kind of a, what is your history? What is, how, how does this play a role in your life? So skateboarding, music, um, back in the early eighties and, you know, beyond always, you know, taught me culture and taught me about art and so forth. So the, and, um, you know, I came from the film era where film there was no digital cameras. So, you know, taking photographs of skating and, um, bands and different things like that, not really being serious about it. Cause I mean, at the time, that camera thing was always, everybody had a camera just like now on their cell phone. And then um, fast forward, life took some tolls on me and I quit doing a lot of stuff that I was passionate about. And then did a lot of work on myself and found that photography and art were something that helped me um, stay, stay grounded, stay, it was like a healthy escape. And then I jumped back into like photography, like a full-time thing about seven years ago, I would say. Like seriously, like taking it seriously, um, investing in cameras and, you know, that's, and, and you know, and all that. Have you had any formal training? Have you gone to school for photography or has it been an entirely self-developed skill? All self-developed, man. I, you know, I, I work and teach at a school where kids don't like school. And a lot of my job is to, help them succeed with school and and uh, use different things in non-traditional ways to help them graduate. So I was that kid, man. I hated school. Um, my attention span's like this big, so I, I, it's hard for me to sit through a class. And um, I didn't take photography in school. I just, like I said, it was just friends and the skateboarding culture and punk rock culture and that kind of stuff that helped me get into it. You know, just really find the passion for it. And then as Time went on. I just, you know, just, you know, just blew a lot of uh, crappy photos and kept taking them and taking them and learning and learning on my own and studying other people's work. You know, the more you do something, hopefully the better you get. You know, so. Uh, so it's, it's a it's a labor of love. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's got to be, or it's you know, it's not. Um, it's not going to be there. You know, my like I said, my attendance span is big. So if it wasn't, I'd been whatever. You know, so. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and take this time now. Uh, Brian has actually put together, I guess they're kind of films, right? Is that the best way to describe them? Yeah. So I don't know. I always thought it would be cool to be a um, movie score or soundtrack person for like movies. So I got this idea. And it's a mindfulness technique I actually use it, um, while I'm laying in bed at night and I just make them and I uh, just stay in that moment and stay focused and I just think about songs that I like or old songs and how my photos might fit with that. So we're going to go ahead and take this time and we're going to watch Autopilot by Brian Tryon. And uh, we'll be back after the film is over. Just have this eye for, you know, catching stuff. I always have a camera. It's an obsession kind of too, because it's like I'm always, always look out or you know, I have friends of mine, I'll be talking to them in a sentence. So I just get, I just stop what I'm doing and go take a picture and I come back and I'm, oh, I'm so I apologize. I'm listening, but I, I saw something over there, you know, and, you know, use it turns out to be a pretty cool deal. You know? I feel old here. I'm
being my it's mindful it's being aware with uh, the world around you like i said in the past i mean things that took me away from my passions you know i didn't care to listen to the birds chirp in the morning i didn't care to watch these moments and catch these moments it was and now i have you know i'm grateful to be able to do that stuff I had to I had to learn that you know everything um, I do has got to be positive. It's got to be a positive thing. You know we live in such a negative negative world, especially right you know right 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 now. But um, yeah, just it's just something that you know you can be passionate about anything. You feel passionate about working out, running, and whatever. I think I think it's good to have a passion. And I'm like I said again, I'm grateful that photography became my passion. And that said, like that's you're capturing those moments of beauty and ugliness and whatever, and you're you know it's a, it's a tangible physical form, especially if you print your own photographs. So. I think you should have more questions and answers in art or photography or whatever that is. That you know? you're, you're telling a story, so it's kind of cool. These people, you know, other, the viewer can, you know, make up their own stories of their own. You know, I, I think I think I want people to have more questions, not translate it the way I want to translate it, because it's cool to see and hear like what people think about art. You know, and, and I kind of I like the mystery and I like people who create it. I think it helps me as a photographer too. It helps me think about different things too. It's like, oh yeah, it's like a, it's like a cool critique in a way, I guess. Also, that makes sense. So that was Autopilot by Brian Tryon. Brian, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about the the narrative and the construction of this uh, of this piece? Yeah, the th I think the, the the narrative behind it is kind of this. Um, I was trying to find those passions again when I started working on myself, and so I started playing music with a friend of mine. We would just get together in my garage, and we were kind of getting songs, kind of getting stuff together. So I thought the name of the band should be the river sends dead horses so i had this picture in my head of but in a poetic way with this river of dead horse like you know like wild horses kind of just died in the in, in the river and just kind of started floating down you know um and there was something i don't know man beautiful and poetic about that to me i love horses anyway I, I grew up with them i had my own horse as a kid oddly enough um and then so i took these photographs of these horses thinking of that and then I threw the skulls and every because of the the death stuff and then the religious piece of it too is I, I, I'm a huge fan of religious artwork um, I've done a lot of projects on that so I thought all three like the, the horses the skulls and the religious piece the stuff you do that I've shot like I think artistically or whatever you want to call it um, all fit into that way of thinking of this the river of sense and horses kind of 
a uh, couple of technical questions. Are you, do you uh, primarily shoot digital or film these days or what it, or a mixture of both? Uh, it's a mixture of both for sure. I would love just to full on do um, um, film, but um, when I have commissioned um, certain, you know, certain photo shoots, certain things, like super quick turnaround. Um, and sometimes uh, spell with COVID, I, there was two, two of my dark rooms I couldn't go to one at the Minotaur, I still one here at the, the, the school um, because of COVID. So that set me behind. So anyways, I guess it's a timing thing. Uh, um, I like digital for the fact that, um, you know, I, I can get freelance work and do freelance work with that. And um, I shoot a Fuji X-T20, so it's got the super film vibe to it anyways, and the lens and, you know, everything about that. So I can still put some of that soul into it. And I guess it's like a drum machine and a, and a, and a live drummer kind of deal. I would, if I had it my way, I would shoot nothing but film. You know? Now we're gonna take a look at uh, some pretty amazing imagery, in my opinion. Uh, Thank this you. Is, this is uh, entitled The COVID Revolution. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at it and uh, talk about it when it's over. So Brian, there are some uh, some strong moments. I guess that's putting it lightly, probably. <laughs> right, right. Um, do you want to talk about the experience of well, talk? I guess maybe give us a little context. What was where were these uh, where were these photos taken, and kind of what were the circumstances that these photos were taken? Yeah, like so, approaching this scenario in this project that I wanted to do was so I started when COVID first happened. You know, I was out photographing, you know, just different kinds of things in COVID, you know, the long lines of stores, grocery store shelves being empty, um, you know, the, the, re the assurance of people wearing masks and then everything just being shut down. So um, continuing that, you know, I always had this, this vision of like, okay, we're like in this tornado shelter while COVID's happening and the tornado and the storm passing over us. And then we're, you know, COVID kind of gets to this point where we're able to start opening up slowly again and uh, you know things are not as gnarly as they were so we kind of come out of the shelter and we're kind of like looking around like how the storm's over but in this time though um, we came out of the shelter and there is a, um, a civil rights movement in all true aspects a revolution um, with some stuff that has been going down in this part of our history so um, I took to the streets. It was just, you know, I, um, you know, I'm back backtracking a little bit. I, I pictured in my mind when COVID first started, 
that we would have national guards like blocking off our city streets and stuff. I mean, it was it was pretty gnarly to think about because we had no, you know, this is a new ground for us. So um, thinking that and being how powerful this movement was 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 taking place, I mean, it, it was just it was a no brainer for me. I, did, I I had to go and see this part of history. You know what? You know it, it it's a very important part of history. It's a continuation of history. It's just a Another pendulum swing, in my opinion. I don't think uh, you know if they ever went away, this this movement's ever went away. Now it's just um, little parts of history brings the people back to the streets and back to wanting to um, use their voices. So I I wanted to be right in the middle of that, man. I wanted to be there. I didn't want to be on the sidelines photographing. I want or zoom big you know goofy sports lenses that people use as, you know to photograph. I wanted to be right in the action. And I wanted to hear what people had to say. I wanted a narrative. I didn't want to sit behind behind my computer screen or a TV screen. I don't watch TV, but like a lot of people do, and just make these judgments on this. I wanted to go see for myself what was really happening. It was super, super, super powerful. You know, looking at these images, you know, it, it is it is you know, it's definitely presented in a very documentary kind of a sense. Where right in the in the true sense of you're documenting an event and there's not, right. you know, there's not, you know, regardless of what someone may believe, you can, you know, you can take a look at these, uh, at these photos and kind of get a sense of that time and that place. And, right. the, you know, then there's, and there's so much emotion in these photos. You see, yeah. you see tension, yeah. you know, you see anger, obviously yeah. um, you see fear, you know, you, you uh, there's some hope in there. There's some beauty, yeah. you know, there's, yeah. it's really like a truly powerful uh, collection of shots. Yeah. And, I, and um, you know, most of my, my the photographers I really do admire are, are documentary style photographers and, you know, I think you grow into different parts of your photography and documentary and people photography are just, you got to capture that, man. It's, you know, um, and I, this is a small chunk of what I photograph. I have rolls and rolls of film. I shot both film and digital, um, depending on the situation. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, you can go look at these photographs and then compare them to, actually I went to the Pike Creek Library archives one time and I saw this um, protest of this uh, people downtown that were protesting, you know, not being able to get hired because of their skin color at a clothing store downtown. And if you put those photographs side to side, you, and that's why I shot them in black and white and that's what I wanted to film. And I, that's what I mostly shoot anyways, but you, you wouldn't know what time it was, but that's why, but you see a cell phone or something or you see something, I like to add those little elements, you know, in there. So you can, you can, you know, sadly, you can't differentiate from the 70s, 50s to now. It's the same. The same you know, problem. It's the same problems, you know, whether you believe that they're the same problems or not, it's still a, the same problem. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and take a look at another one of Brian's pieces entitled Atmosphere.
hey, Brian, uh, want to give us a little, uh, little insight into atmosphere? Um, I did this series of uh, photographs of these nine series. Um, and some were experimental where I just would drive by these locations and take the shot because I wanted that moving, that blur, that, that motion. And uh, yeah, so these, these photos are kind of lonely. They're, you know, they were shot all over, some in Alaska, some here, um, some of my travels and stuff. So it's just that vibe. Plus I wanted to capture a, different, like a certain light mood too, you know? Even if it was daylight, it still had that natural light look to it compared to like the night scene. They're all obviously, there's no natural light. It's so what are the, uh, I'm interested to hear your take on kind of the technical challenges and reality of shooting film at night and in, in low light conditions. Yeah, it's definitely film speed. So you have your different film speeds. Um, but I think it's the accident part of it. I think also too, I just don't know what I'm going to get, you know, mm -hmm. and see what happens. And, you know, you wrote, you shoot 36 exposures. You may only get two photographs, one photograph out of that, but it's the whole process. And you know, I'm a, I don't know, I think I'm thrifty. I, I'm able to use most everything I take a photo of somehow, some way. You know, whether it's an art project or a painting project or whatever. So, yeah, I don't want that. I want that looseness. All my stuff is loose anyways, I think. And I don't want that tack sharp um, stuff. And I think that's another thing going back to what you asked me about film and digital. That's, you know, sometimes you're going to lose that, that too. I just like the rawness of it as well. Yeah, and you know, film photography, it slows you down, man. It keeps you thinking about your shot and your photograph. It's like, you know, so Adam call it your mind's eye, you know. It's, a lot of times I see what I'm going to, you know, I kind of have a, a vision of what I want to shoot when I'm thinking about a photo shoot. Sometimes it's spontaneous, but yeah, I kind of want to, I want to know what it looks like, you know, and there's a, um, and you're a part of the whole process too. You know, you're shooting digital machine gun shooting, they call it, you're spending too much time in here when you can do, you're missing the shots out there, you know, so. So as a, as a teacher, so you're, you know, I, I would, uh, probably rightfully assume that your students are all you know grew up in the digital age so it's you know yeah. so it's ubiquitous for for you know younger people to just to have camera phones or have digital you know right. digital digital cameras and so that is like you know that and that really has in a lot of ways just completely supplanted photography right you know, over, yeah. over film photography how do you feel that your your students kind of take to the film uh, oh film? man so i would offer a bas basic digital photography class um, and then um, I would do a darkroom class later, kind of like a more advanced. And I thought that's, that's the way it was, I should be doing it. Maybe I'm doing it backwards. Maybe I should do film before digital. Doing that, I got more more kids scheduled in the class, so I got more participation and actually more students showing up to class. Because I can make a whole digital class about the camera itself. You know, that could be a whole semester long. Thing, but with the film part of it is basically I, I show them talk, we talk composition, we talk about lighting, I show them the, the basics of the, your 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 stops, your your uh, shutter speed, and your um, you know your you know your ISO is always the film, and then um, uh, we go from there. I just kind of throw them to the wolves, but I'm I'm like their Sherpa guy because I got a, I got along with them. That's kind of how. And then they love the whole fact that it's film because it's you know it's it's um, old school. You know? kind of the deal and then but it's a tangible thing they get to be the whole from them loading the film into the camera to their eye to them developing the film to them making their own prints they're a part of that whole process okay we're gonna go ahead and watch quarter mile thunder again by the illustrious and talented mr brian tryon
quarter mile thunder. Where did how did you come up with that name? So my you know quarter mile thunder is you know you're you're hearing thunder off in the distance you know kind of deal. The reason the 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 photos I chose were I wanted that moody almost dust bowl look to them I guess like we've been in this drought for a long time and I had just took a trip to see my dad in Iowa before you know a couple a few weeks ago and I was thinking of this we were at this campground in my my camper and I blast of thunder I mean it was like a bomb exploding and we're in the middle of Nebraska at this little you know flatland campground and it was like two o'clock in the morning and it just shook the whole camper and it was like I thought something blew up I thought we were something exploded and then I kind of started dozing back to sleep and I could hear that in the same power and intensity in that but it never rained so I was thinking too I guess in my in my psyche too is like those you know the, the dry crops and the rotting and the and that kind of disappearing has kind of got me thinking about the quarter mile thing, the song, the images, and then, you know, how that would all fit together. So I guess that's more explanation to, to the video. All right, Brian, um, this has been a fantastic conversation uh, about photography and art and life and skateboarding and music and all the, all the, all the great things. So no, it's been you- my pleasure. It's, it's definitely something I needed today as a good positive piece of my day which is, is awesome it's always good to see you too Justin. it's always good to see you too brian is pretty prolific uh you, <laughs> you, you I've, I've, to, I've heard that term before <laughs> yeah how uh if you had to guess if you just had to pull it pull a number out of the air how many photos how many photos have you taken in your life <sighs> man top of your head i can tell you like okay okay just going from what i've stored into my phone about 40 something thousand <laughs> That's a good, that's a lot. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <That's laughs> I choice. photograph something every day. I try to make it something I do every day, daily, no matter what. So. Awesome. Well, keep up the good work, sir. And uh, again, pleasure as always. And uh, to, to those of you who are watching, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching, guys.